What are some solved mysteries? The disappearance of Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, author of The Little Prince, who was also a French reconnaissance pilot during World War II. In 1944, he took off on a reconnaissance mission from Corsica and never made it back, and there was never any evidence of what might have happened to him and his plane. Finally, in 1998, a French fisherman pulled up his net and found wrapped in it a silver bracelet engraved with Saint Exupéry's name, and in 2004, a diver searched in the area and found the remains of his plane, which had apparently been shot down by a German fighter after all. Ro, thank you for sharing this, The Little Prince is my favorite book of all time and I never knew he disappeared. Adventures with Purpose a great YouTube channel where a group of divers find missing people underwater after years when the local authorities don't care anymore or just don't have the resources. 1947 A British South American Airways aircraft named Stardust disappeared. Its last message was simply Stendek. After an exhausting search, no trace of the aircraft was found. For years conspiracy theories and talk of alien abduction by Wackers circulated. Till 1998. When mountain climbers on a remote mountain found an engine, pieces of metal, and clothing at the bottom of a glacier on the side of Mount Tupungato. Turns out the aircraft got caught flying the wrong way in the jet stream while it was flying at night and using a system of timing when to start their descent. Being in the jet stream reduced their airspeed in relation to the earth and they smacked themselves straight into the side of a mountain, after which an avalanche covered the wreckage. The wreckage took decades to flow down the side of the mount with the glaciers. The glacier preserved the wreck so well that 50 years later the recovery team found identifiable remains, personal items, and could read serial numbers on the engines. Amazing one of the landing gear tires was still inflated, and that teams continued to visit the site for periodically as more of the aircraft, cargo, and remains of passengers are still emerging from the ice. Benjamin Kyle Man found beating behind a Burger King with severe amnesia. It was a fascinating mystery until it was solved, then it was kind of sad. He had made TV appearances, had a couple of Amazon Reddit, but no one could identify him. When his identity was discovered, William Burgess Powell, there was still a 20 year gap in his life from 1984 to 2004. There's no record he had done anything. He had distanced himself from his family and had no friends. Which is why no one recognized or identified him from his TV appearances. While it doesn't give us who the Zodiac Killer is, just recently his most infamous 340 cipher was solved after 51 years. Another science mystery. Back in the 1800s, evolution theorists had predicted the age of the Earth to be several milliard years, since this would have been necessary for the current life forms to have evolved. But Kelvin, the number one superstar of physics at the time, had used thermodynamics to calculate the age of the Earth based on the temperature of its insides, and he said it was quite a bit younger. This was a mystery for many years, and was considered one of the major flaws of then current evolution theory. It was not until the early 1900s they found the answer. Radioactivity. Decays of uranium and other radioactive elements are heating up the Earth, so the cooling takes longer than expected. The biologists were right all along. But when the scientists who made the discovery were about to present their findings, who's sitting at the back of the lecture room? It's Kelvin, now an old man. He's still alive and has come to watch their presentation. They were terrified at the idea of having to stand in front of the Lord of Physics himself and basically explain why he was wrong. But to their great relief, he immediately fell asleep. I think about this when I myself fall asleep in physics class. It happens to the best of us. El Dorado or the Lost City of Gold turned out to be a mistranslation. It was just the name of some guy that got mistranslated to the name of a city. Sounds like exactly what someone who is on the trail would say. The Andreen McDonald case. She and her husband Andre yes. Andreen and Andre originally were from Jamaica. They moved up to my town in Texas where Andre was Air Force and Andreen was a bodybuilding business owner. Andre was pretty jealous that Andreen was more successful and was constantly begging demanding that she make him co-owner of her company. She always said no. One day he had had it, and did away with her, the gym that she frequented. Every single morning, got concerned when she stopped showing up. She was very close with the ladies that she worked out with, and even gave them a key to her house. 
she told them that if she ever went missing, that her husband probably did it, and they knew he had an attitude. So one day while Andre was out, the ladies went to check on Andreen. Her car was there, her wallet was there, but she wasn't. They found blood and hair in her bathroom. That's when cops were called. Cops showed up when Andre was home and asked about Andreen. He said she was in the hospital. They asked him, if she's in the hospital, how come her wallet's here? He responded simply, talk to my lawyer. They got a warrant and were able to search the house further. Saw more leftover evidence in the bathroom, and evidence of clothes had been found burned in the fire pit in the backyard. But no body. So all they could do was charge him with a missing persons deal. Andre was super snarky about it too. How he'd be proven innocent. How the cops would never catch on. Little did he realize how loved Andreen was, and how much Texas ranchers hate corrupt and snarky murderers. Crowds gathered daily and were given permission to sweep over ranchers land for any sign of Andreen's body. Just as crowds started feeling defeated, and Andre started to see hope of being released, a rancher was scoping his field. He had heard coyotes out and went to see what could have enticed them. Sure enough, he found human bones, later identified as Andreen. So yeah. Proper charges were able to be filed. Add on. So some ask why she stayed or why he felt jealous that she was more successful. Remember they are from Jamaica. The whole point of coming here was to better themselves and bring pride to their families. So she was doing great. But because she was doing so good, his family was kind of looking down on him because his wife was better more successful than him. And then she stayed with him. Mainly because she wanted to try and make sure their daughter's life could be as normal as possible. Sucks that that kind of backfired for her. But now she's being taken care of by her aunt and grandma who both love and support her. Apparently he killed her in front of their autistic non-speaking 6 year old daughter. The guy is pure evil. Where is the Titanic? Most people don't realize that half of the people in the world grew up when the ship's location was still a complete mystery. Now, it's old news. Where is MH370? Late to the party, Hugh Lazarus, who recorded the haunting goodbye horses that was later included in the soundtrack for Silence of the Lambs, was a mystery for many years. It turns out that she recorded exactly two singles, retired from music, and is now a bus driver. Memories of Murder, a movie based on true story about South Korea's first serial murderer. A confession was made in 2019 after more than 30 years. He was already in jail for raping and killing his sister-in-law. Go check the movie, it's a masterpiece. Jesus in the Land of Tay, a few years ago, 2017. Comedian Nate Fernald posted a tweet of an enamel pin he had bought of a familiar looking friendly monster with the word Jesus written under it. He was unable to find any information on what Jesus is and the mystery took the internet by storm. The mystery kept growing as someone found a sticker of Jesus alongside other characters all listed as the land of Tay. The sticker sheet was from a company called Denison. There were no Google results at all for either Jesus or the land of Tay. With multiple people researching that was where the mystery was left off and people kind of forgot about it. But a couple years later it was solved. A podcast was made where they investigated the mystery. Got a hold of the former art director of Denison back in the 80s who referred them to a few potential artists and they found the daughter of one of the artists who had passed away and then her father's stuff was the original pencil drawings of the creators of the land of Tay. It was never anything but those stickers. This internet mystery still appeared on lists for a while as unsolved. The only mystery left is who made the enamel pins, which is still a mystery but not quite as big as who is this character in this land that seems familiar but that there's no record of. I have one that most people seem to not know about. Grand Duchess Anastasia was in fact killed with the rest of her family in 1918. She never escaped and the several women throughout the 20th century claiming to be her lied. The site of the execution of the Tsar and his family was completely untouched until 1991. Excavation found only 9 of the 11 expected remains. It wasn't until 2007 that two further sets of remains were found a small distance away from the previous grave site. DNA testing found that one of the sets of remains belonged to Tserevich Alexei and the other to one of his sisters. With this find, it proved conclusively that the entire imperial family was in fact executed and buried in 1918. Not a lot of PPL know, 
but Anastasia's remains were confirmed because Prince Philip provided DNA. He was a grand nephew of the Tsarina Alexandra. The Pioneer Gravity Anomaly Space probe wasn't accelerating away from Earth the way we'd predicted, but it didn't get noticed until the probe got way the frick out there. Next space probe gets launched. Gets way out there. Same thing happens. WTF. How does acceleration not work right? Does gravity just change really far away? Turns out the heat from the radioactive death generator was all coming off the same side of the space probe and the extra particle radiation gave a thermal recoil force resulting in an extra acceleration of no kidding. About 0.0000000000874 ms2. Over enough distance, it all counts. The Prophet Hen of Leeds. A hen was laying eggs with messages like Christ is coming and people thought the world was ending. It turned out the farmer was actually writing on the eggs herself, and then reinserted it back into the chicken. Edited for gender of the farmer. Reinserted it back into the chicken. In 1981, a Soviet submarine ran aground in Swedish waters. This was a huge deal, although the Soviets claimed the sub was in distress and didn't purposefully enter Swedish waters. Basically everyone in Sweden saw it as evidence that their waters were being invaded by spy subs. Plus, they did some snooping of their own and determined that the sub was emitting radiation, meaning it had nukes on board. So they went along with the Soviets clearly false claim about an accident and helped get the sub out of there, but panic was in the air. So the Swedes did exactly what you'd expect, and they prepared for more Soviet subs. I mean, when you see one Soviet sub, surely there are more, right? So Sweden developed advanced acoustic technology to detect subs and they created a plan to basically seal off their waters when they heard a sub. And wouldn't you know it, a year later, they found a Soviet sub. Well, they didn't find it, but they absolutely heard it, and they cut off the bay and figured they just had to hunt the sub down. But after a month, they couldn't find it, they gave up and reopened the bay, but they assumed the sub found a way out, but they'll get it next time. And then it happened again, but they couldn't find it again, and then again and again with no clear pattern for a decade. What the heck? Thankfully, the Berlin Wall fell and the Soviet Union collapsed. So, no more subs, right? NYET, because the Russian subs were still coming. Wait, what? Okay, so now nothing is making sense. At this point, the Swedish military brought an outside expert to figure out what was happening. This included oceanographer types who were obvious experts in the surrounding waters. The military then played the audio evidence of the Soviet submarines, only to be told they weren't submarines at all. They were fish, and the propeller-like sound was water being released from their swim bladders. And that's the story of how the Swedish military spent 10 years and tens of millions of dollars chasing fish farts. When I was in the Finnish conscript army I was taught how to identify a sub from fish and seals. It was mindnumbingly boring to listen to basically white noise for hours when you were on watch. We all dreamed of catching a sub just for a bit of excitement. This is a personal family mystery that got solved a few years ago, so nothing exciting that would have gotten media attention. Haha. <laughs> but my maternal great grandmother once ran away from home to the big city, and came back pregnant. She refused to disclose anything about the father. Either way, even down to my generation, we have had unusually shaped feet, rather flat, with a strange angle, and it has made most regular shoes uncomfortable. It's not so bad for me. I take physically more after my paternal side of the family, but my brother and mother have it really bad. So does my cousin, who ended up seeking the help of a physical therapist. The therapist said that her feet are truly unusually shaped and referred her to a specialist doctor who's an expert on feet. Apparently that's a thing. The doctor examined her feet and said that the only place in the world with distinct feet like that is a certain county in France, with winemakers who have been stomping on grapes for centuries. He said that he is 99% certain that the feet come from there, that we must have close family lineage from there. My cousin told our family, and we were very confused. We most certainly don't have French relatives. Until we realized, great grandma, the city she ran away to was known to house traveling craftsmen from all over the world. She must have hooked up with a French winemaker. We joke that now she rolled over in her grave, because this strange feet doctor discovered her secret.
It may have only been a mystery for your family but it was a joy to read. Thank you for sharing. Molyneux's problem. If a man born blind can feel the differences between shapes such as spheres and cubes, could he, if given the ability to see, distinguish those objects by sight alone? In reference to the tactile schemeter he already possessed, the answer is no. Mary Toft. I mean, really, what the frick? TL. DR. NSW. Woman starts giving birth to copious amounts of rabbit parts. Woman taken to London and studied under intense supervision. Turns out she was shoving the pieces up there days before for the publicity. The tomb of Jesus previously unknown brother turned out to be a hoax to try to sell the tomb of a nobody for a lot of money. Bermuda Triangle Devil's Sea, a triangle shaped section of ocean where airplanes and boats were known to disappear. Apparently most stories were embellished, and there is so much traffic that goes through the area it's actually a very small amount of vessels that go missing, percentage wise. I remember when I was a kid my dad telling me that the Bermuda Triangle was BS. I remember him saying that more ships have sunk in Lake Superior than the Triangle. The Marfa Mystery Lights. Small town in West Texas has lights that can be seen dancing off the horizon in a certain spot some nights. For many years the source of the light was not known and explanations ranged from mass hysteria to the ever popular UFO. One researcher finally figured it out. The elevation changes and desert air would occasionally combine to distort and project headlights from cars on a highway several miles away. Reports of the mystery lights from times prior to the highway or automobiles are probably campfires in the general area of the highway. Like many highways, the area was already used as a road for quite a long time. The story of the Toynbee tiles always fascinated me. In the 1980s all these tiles started to appear in major cities across the US. Mostly around Philadelphia, they were laid in the ground, in the middle of the streets and no one knew how they appeared there. They had strange messages. Toynbee idea in Kubrick's 2001 Resurrect Dead on Planet Jupiter. There's an amazing documentary about this guy who noticed the tiles and went on a quest to figure out how they were appearing and who was creating them. The tiles are actually in the asphalt, which is not an easy featuring. In the dock Justin Dewar finds the guy and figures out how he does it with a car that has no passenger seat and a hole in the bottom. It's a beautifully heartbreaking story and I highly recommend watching it. Yeah, I've seen one in person in NYC. Pretty cool to just see it out of the blue, when I'd actually heard about them before. Fast Radio Bursts, or FRBs. First discovered in 2007, it's a radio pulse a few milliseconds long typically coming from extragalactic sources. In April of 2020 the Chime radio telescope found the first one recorded in the Milky Way. The source was a magnetar, a highly magnetic remnant of a large dead star. Magnetars are a special kind of neutron star because they have such an intensely strong magnetic field. If a magnetar was a moon's distance away it would be able to rip your car keys out of your pocket. What causes these FRBs is a magnetic wake. Magnetars are so dense that the surface is under a lot of strain to collapse and toward the core but the physical density of the neutron star is holding it back. A very slight shift in the crust of the magnetar releases a huge burst of X-rays gamma rays along with radio waves. And that is the fast radio bursts we see. 100 years ago, Viking bones from one of the most important grave finds in Denmark disappeared from the Museum of National History. They were found last week in a box, seemingly misplaced among elements from a different find. I've become skeptical when police solve a serial killing. They are often under a lot of pressure to find the killer they sometimes blame a bunch of killings on one guy. Had a documentary on Netflix. Brain fart can't recall the name of it, of a guy in Texas that confessed to the murder of a girl he was dating. She was wearing red panties and the cops started calling it the red panty color. He confessed and then they asked him if he killed anyone else and he said lots. Word got around and the sheriff and Texas rangers would tell other agencies to bring the case file. Strawberry milkshake and pack of lucky cigs and the guy would talk. He confessed to a lot of killings. Someone got curious and did a map of all the killings and when. Turned out it was physically impossible for him to be in all those places at the time of the killings. Sheriff and rangers had a simple trick. They would give the guy the milkshake and cigs and tell the investigators from other states to give the guy a little time and then interview him. 
but they would leave the case file in the room with him all alone and he would read the case file. They come in and ask questions and he knows all about it. Case solved. In the end it turned out his DNA was not on the panties of the girl he first confessed to killing but some other guy's DNA is. But the sheriff, cops, rangers consider all the cases to be closed. Rex McElroy. Over a good few years he was an absolute piece of crap. Lived in Skidmore, Missouri. Groomer. Rapist. Married this 14 year old girl who he gave Stockholm Syndrome to avoid rape charges. Piece of crap lawyer to get him out of little attempted murder. Assault with a deadly weapon etc. It was well known that he also stole cattle or something like that. But because of the crappy law system they couldn't do anything about it without direct proof. Oh. Did I forget to mention that he had kids with this 14 year old? One of his crappy kids tried to steal some candy from a store in 1980ish. The store owner who was 70 caught this kid. So Rex started stalking the family who owned the store. Coming to their house and just standing in front. Making threats and all. In a confrontation he tried to blow the owner's head off. Ernest Bowen Camp. The owner dodged and had his neck grazed and he was quite hurt, but alive. Finally he was caught for this and found guilty of attempted murder, but bailed because he was rich. People would literally leave whenever he entered a bar. He bullied a sheriff into stepping down from his job, and was constantly loaded with money, buying new trucks all the time. Well, eventually people got tired of this crap. Dozens of people followed him into the bar. McElroy finished his drink, went back out. As he started the car, an unknown amount of people opened fire on the bastard, absolutely destroying him. As a matter of fact, they wanted him dead so bad they found revolver casings on the ground, meaning someone had enough time to reload an entire revolver. There were numerous shooters, and the Stockholm's wife called out one shooter, but every other person there, around 50 people, said that they saw nothing, and Hexham even said they heard nothing. So yeah. Bastard was dead after near a dang decade of ruining this little town. Investigation was concluded with nobody charged, no proper testification, nobody sentenced. But we all know it were the townsfolk, and McElroy deserved it. If I recall correctly right before McElroy was shot the rest of the town held a beating about what to do about him. The sheriff said something to the effect of just form a neighborhood watch group. Whatever you do don't take matters into your own hands. He then presumably winked at everyone, got in his car, and drove to the neighboring county. Scientists spent 37 years trying to figure out where monarch butterflies go in the winter. They spent a ton of time searching in Texas because that was the southernmost location of where tagged butterflies were found. But the people in Mexico simply didn't get the memo that anyone was looking. Until an American tourist found a butterfly tagged in Canada hundreds of miles south of Texas in the mountains near Mexico City. Chelsea Brooks murderer. A girl went to a Halloween party dressed as Poison Ivy, not knowing that it would be her last party. Chelsea Brook was last seen alive on the 31st of October with a man in costume and the wee hours. Three weeks later, she was found dead in an empty field. Police were unable to identify the mystery man for almost two years but finally arrested Daniel Clay in the summer of 2016. Investigations led to Daniel's girlfriend, who claims that Daniel confessed to her about the heinous crime he committed a couple of years ago. Daniel faced a tough jury, which sentenced him a daunting punishment of life sentence. It is believed that Daniel escaped the capital punishment as he was only charged with second degree murder. There was one of these dogs mysteriously jumping off of a certain bridge to their deaths. They thought there was some demon that possessed them to make them kill themselves. It was looked into and discovered that the dogs could smell some creature that lived below the bridge so they wanted to chase it and, because the bridge wall was so high, and behind the bridge was a lot of foliage, that the dogs from their level couldn't perceive that red beer drop on the other side. Chupacabra has been pretty much explained by a guy who investigated it for 5 years and wrote a book called Tracking the Chupacabra. Long story short, the initial eyewitness thought the movie species was a documentary. Most subsequent sightings bodies were wild animals that looked weird because they had mange. Whether the city of Troy really existed or was just legend, it did. Some German guy who got rich in early industrialization used his wealth to search for it. Pretty much all the scholars of the time said it was a fool's errand. Then he actually found it. Roman concrete that resisted seawater. 
and the missing Roanoke colony. The lost recipe for the concrete turned out to be something we misinterpreted, and the Roanoke colony was abandoned because the settlers decided to live and mix with the natives. DNA tracing was able to connect this. Three major discoveries go to marine archaeologist and geophysicist Dr. Robert Ballard for 1. Deep sea hydrothermal vents that support an abundance of plant and animal life where no light reaches despite the 400 sea temps, high pressures, and toxic affluent. This deviated from previous scientific beliefs paradigms that sunlight was needed for life to thrive. It led to discovery of 100s of previously unknown life forms and validating chemosynthesis. 2. Found and explored the Titanic preserving it historically and respectfully as a mass grave site. 3. Found the WW2 German mega battleship Bismarck. Dr. Ballard's resume represents a 50 year career in who's who among marine scientists. Lyle Stevick. Surprise he isn't here yet. He was the case of a man who hanged himself in a motel in Amanda Park, Washington in September 2001. He signed into the hotel under the name Lyle Stevick, not his real name, and he was found dead in his room, hanged in the closet, with money left for the room and a note that just said suicide. No other identifiable information was found on him. Police investigations at the time did not produce any results. He was only identified in 2018 via DNA analysis, but his family chose not to reveal his true identity. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon have long been a mystery, since no archaeological evidence was ever found for any such garden in Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar, who many associate with the gardens, was not known to have enacted any major works of engineering, which would have been necessary to water the gardens. Many have suspected that they may never have existed at all. A popular modern theory is that the gardens weren't Babylonian, but actually Assyrian. The Assyrian king Sennacherib was well known for his waterworks and aqueducts, and his palace in Nineveh was documented to have lavish gardens. It's believed that people mistakenly attributed the gardens to Babylon. The name Babylon means gate of the gods, and was used to describe several cities in Mesopotamia. Nineveh's gates were named after different gods by Sennacherib, so it would likely have been referenced that way. Archaeology at the site of Nineveh has been difficult in recent years because it's very close to Mosul, Iraq. The region had been occupied by ISIS, who intentionally damaged parts of the site. I've seen so many different depictions of what the gardens were supposed to look like. So fascinating to me, and something I've been curious about for so long. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.